Hi, and welcome to another video from mathsrevision.net, Probability. Probability is the measure of how likely something is to happen. We measure probability on a scale of 0 to 1. If something is never going to happen, the probability is 0. If an event is certain to happen, the probability is then 1. If an event is as likely to happen as it is likely not to happen, the chances of it happening are 0 0.5. There's a small gap between 0 and 0 0.5 where it is unlikely that an event will happen. That's because it's not definitely not going to happen, however the chances of it happening are still higher. The same can be said for the other gap, only this time it will be likely to happen, as the chances of it not happening are less, however it's not a certain thing that is going to happen. Now the way we work out probability is the number of ways an outcome can happen divided by the total possible outcomes. If we take a dice for example, we want to roll a 3. The number of ways this can happen is 1, because there's only one 3 on any regular dice. However, the total possible outcomes are 6, because there are 6 phases, each with a different number on a regular dice. If we divide 1 by 6, we get roughly 0.17 when rounded up. And, on our scale of 0 to 1, that makes it unlikely. If, however, we wanted to roll more than the 3, we have the numbers 4, 5 and 6 that are possible outcomes. So, the number of ways that could happen are 3, because there are 3 different numbers, and the total possible outcomes are still 6, because there are still 6 faces on the dice. So, 3 out of 6, which is the same as 1 out of 2, which is the same as 0.5. So, therefore, it's as likely to happen as it is likely not to happen. If we wanted to roll more than a 2, there is still 3, 4, 5 and 6 that we could roll. So, that gives us 4 possibilities and there are still 6 faces on the dice, so that's 4 out of 6, which is the same as 2 out of 3, or 0.66%. And on our scale, we can see that that's in the likely zone, because it's not a certainty, however, the chances of that happening are more likely than they are not. Now, we come to experimental probability. Experimental probability is, like the title says, using probability in experiments. So, let's take a coin for example. The coin has two heads, so two possible outcomes, and each one can only appear once on the coin, so 1 out of 2 giving us 0.5 is the probability of landing either heads or tails. We might do this experiment and flip the coin 10 times, giving us 7 heads and 3 tails. Now, we know that's not the probability that we have before, so we can flip the coin again 100 times this time, and maybe we'll get 44 heads and 56 tails. That's still not perfect, but it's definitely closer than we had before. We could do the experiment again and flip the coin a thousand times, only this time we might get something even closer than that, at around 500 times for heads and 500 times for tails. By flipping the coin more times, we've come to a more accurate answer. Therefore, we can safely say that the more we experiment, the more accurate the results. Now, you may have noticed that there's a lot of work on percentages in this video, so if you'd like more help on percentages, please click the link provided here, or subscribe to our channel for more videos like this, and go to massrevision.net for more content.